So I start here, I have forest cover, and the forest cover looks like this. I'm gonna click on appearance, and then I'm gonna symbolize, symbolize this with graduated colors according to the balsam fir. So these are the numbers of balsam fir in each of these forest cover plots in any case. And it ranges from zero to 1800 or less than or equal to 1800. So the dark ones have more balsam fir than the lighter colored ones. Now, this is one level, this is the source level. So this is the source geography and it is configured like this. The configuration of this geography just refers to its the pattern and size and scale of the polygons. So that's a polygon right there. That's another polygon, polygon here, etc. So it's called a zonal configuration. Now we want to go and summarize or figure out how to transform or transfer the numbers of balsam fir that you see here into this geography of blocks. So we can then have accounts of balsam fir in each of these blocks. And you can see this is a different zonal configuration. Both the size of the polygons are much bigger and there are fewer of them and they have different lines going through them, et cetera, because the geography of the, 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 the boundaries aren't the same. They don't match the forest cover. And of course, if I wanted to see that on top, I could put blocks on top, turn forest cover on at the bottom, and then just um, swipe over here on my appearance tab for the, like that. And if I zoom in a bit, you can see the mismatch in the block data. So that's the forest polygons, and these are the block polygons. So you can see, for example, there's a block here and a block here, and these don't coincide with the boundaries of the forest underneath. So the blocks then become the target. That's the target you know, to which we want to reallocate all of the forest cover counts into the polygons of the blocks. So the first thing we'll, we'll do, I'll just turn off blocks here, is I'm gonna look at the forest cover attribute table. And I see here what I have in there. I have object ID, these numbers here for each of the uh, plots, shape area, and then the number of trees of each type within that particular polygon. So this polygon here, if I zoom to it, it's that small one right there. So there's 200 balsam fir in there. The area of that polygon right now is 44,700 square meters. Because this is coming from a geo database, the geo database automatically keeps the shape length, which is the boundary length, and the shape area up to date according to this layer. However, as part of the basic area interpolation or simple area interpolation process, we're going to need to intersect forest cover at some point with blocks, which again are a different geography. And when we do that, the new layer that's created is an intersection of the two. It'll have more polygons than each of the individual ones. And the shape area and shape length in that intersected one will be the shape area and shape length of each polygon that's in that particular layer. No longer will it reflect the original shape area of forest cover or the original shape area of the blocks themselves because the, these, this particular column only ever stores the current areas of the polygons that you can see. So for basic area interpolation, we need to make a copy of that original area. Why do we need to do that? Well, as we will, will find, or as the issue is here, if I was to look at the block, so here's a, that's one, one block right there. And you can see, for example, that part of that block contains part of this forest polygon. I'm just gonna select that forest polygon so it stays selected in the background. Like so. And then the block geography looks like that. 
So if we just zoom in here, we can see that. Um, again, so that's the original forest, uh, one of the forest polygons and the block. So part of that forest polygon is in the block area right here. Well, I've kind of moved my mouse around. And so we need to know how much of the original forest polygon falls within this block, which is to the um, left of the blue line right here. And to do that, we need to know the original area of that forest block. And then we need, we need to find out the intersected area with the block layer. So the forest cover and the block layer. And we need, then we, we figure out, okay, well, if there is, um, you know, 1% of that original um, forest polygon, the forest cover one right here, which is selected. So if there was, um, you know, if 1% of that forest um, polygon falls within this left block, then 1% of its trees should be allocated to this left block over here. And we can only do that if we know what that percentage is for the allocation, which is called the area ratio. So we need to start by creating a new um, field in the forest cover table, like we see here, to store the current shape area. Then when we intersect it, we'll have a reference of what the original area was to figure out what proportion is in which um, new block. So we know how much of the original source counts to transfer. So I'm gonna start this, I'm gonna to go to my analysis tab and I'll open up Python. And I'm gonna start with some imports. So I'll import arcpy. And again, strictly speaking, you don't need to do this here. This import, it's already there. Let's say from arcpy.analysis, import all. So I'm importing everything for the analysis toolbox because I need to do a um, intersection and that's there in that toolbox. And I'll say from arcpy.management as well. M-A-N-A-G-E-M-E-E, manage, M-T. Uh, import all. So I have those imports. I'll also say from arcpy import env. Now I won't be doing anything with my env settings here because I'm working all in vector data right now. So I have no, there's no critical ones that I really need to set here for the, uh, for this to work. So now that I've done that, I'm going to start by, and I'll just put a little comment here, start by creating um, variable names. So the first variable name will be uh, source and that's equal to forest cover. So I'll just drag that down here like so. So that's gonna be my source of the numbers that I want to reallocate to the target, which is blocks. So I'll call that target equals and I'll just drag in blocks like so. There we go. So now I just have to work with the name source and target rather than having to type forest cover blocks whenever they're needed. So in the source now, in the forest cover, I need to create a new field. And then in that field, I need to uh, compute a new, um, uh, well, not compute new, but co at least co uh, compute the uh, um, areas of the existing forest blocks, the not forest block with the forest cover polygons. So to do that, first I have to add a field. So I just say add field. And I'm not returning anything from this because add field in this case is gonna go for uh, the input table will be the source, the field name, the new field, will be called source area, like that. And then comma, the field type we wanna create is a double because it can potentially have decimal places. 
I notice I don't have anything on the other side here. I'm not saying I don't say add field something equals add field because I'm I'm not storing this. This is just creating an action in the table with this particular field. And so I'm not, uh, there's no need for me to save it into a variable, although I could if I wanted to. So now looking over at the forest cover table underneath here, I'll just move that down for a second. You can see their source area has been added to forest cover. Next, I need to calculate in that field something, which will be the shape area. And probably the quickest way to do that, uh, there's two ways I could do it. I could do it using the, first I'll do it the conventional way. I'll just copy over the existing shape area field. So I'll say calculate field. Calculate field, there we go, there it is. So calculate field, and then that's gonna be again in the source. I'll use the source area field that I just created. So the source area field. And then what do I want? in here in the in the expression so this is a calculate field expression it'll go between single quotes and here i just want the shape area so i say field shape underscore area like so Um, shape area is not defined. Did I spell it wrong? No, shape underscore area. <laughs> S O E R C E area. Oh, I forgot to put the closing. Um, exclamation point in there that's why so i'll just bring that up i forgot to put this in here there we go so now if i have a look at the table here i'll just close the python window for a second and i'll close forest cover and i'll just reopen it so it refreshes so source area should have Unless there's anything still selected. Uh, there was something selected here. Yeah, see, it only calculated it for the one thing that was selected right here. Um, I had forgot to clear my selection prior to the computation. So luckily I'm in Python, it's easy to do. I'll just clear my selection, go back to my Python window and rerun that line. So, you know, it's something I should have checked, but it's an easy thing to forget. And of course, through validation, right? I went to check the results afterwards right away to see what happened with this line. And there was nothing computed except, uh, and that's when I thought, well, why is nothing in? It's all null when I asked it to, to do the, um, the full computation. And that was because there was one thing selected and whenever something is selected, all of the calculations, field calculations or other operations will only happen on the selected features. So I unselected and reran that line. And now that's all good and I can see I'll again close that. I can see I now have source area everything for in here. The second way I could do that is instead of calculate field, I could use um, uh, calculate geometry attributes. So that's another way to do this. It's a especially if you want to do it with geodesic areas, this is a good the way uh, you would want to, you have to do it through calculate geometry attributes. <clears throat> a geodesic area, of course, is the area on the ellipsoid that the coordinate system of this is modeled on, which is uh, I think NAT83 or WGS84. So it'll be a more accurate area, true, more true area to what it is actually covering on an ellipsoidal surface. Um, oh yeah, so here, calculate geometry and my in features would be source. And then my geometry property 
will be area. And that'll be, I have to put it in a certain form here. So it's a double list. And I have to say where it's going to source area. That, that's how that works. Uh, and then what do I want it to be in? It should be square meters. The length unit is meters, but that's optional. And I'll just put here area unit equals, and then um, I'm not sure what that, what they're calling that. So I'll just say area, you see here meters for length and comma. What you're doing up there, square square meters up there, square meters like such, and that's it. So if I do that, I should see the same numbers coming out. So let's just check some of the same numbers here. So the first one is exactly what we see there. So I should just get the same thing that's in shape area coming out right now. So we won't see any change in the numbers in this particular case. So now I'm moving that up down again. You can see they're the same numbers exactly. If I was to have done that in ge geodesic area, and I'm not sure uh, what's that look like area, area geodesic like this. Now we might see some small differences. So you can see here, for example, shape area in the current coordinate system of this layer, which is, we'd have to go to the map and look at coordinate systems, right? It's a UTM zone 16 north. So forest covers in UTM 16 north. That has a, um, scale, a scale factor of the, at the central meridian of 0.996. So 99.6 of true. So that means areas can be off a little bit from what they would be on the ellipsoid. And we can see that right here. So we got four, four, seven hundred, and that's four, four, six, nine, six in actual square meters on the ellipsoid itself. 59706, 59700. So there's not a lot. We're talking like six square meters or so there. Because it's a small, it's a small area. Obviously, if it's a much larger area, these differences become significant. But I'm going to stick with just the regular area calculation. So I'll just go back up a couple here, just to area instead of area geodesic. And there we go. So I'll have a look again. I'll just move this uh, up over here and I'll just go down here a quick, quick check. See, it just copied over the numbers basically but did an actual new calculation. So that's two ways you can uh, compute the area. But the important thing here is that you have a source area and that source area is now a permanent part of this source tables attribute table or the source, the sources attribute table, which is forest cover. So now um, again, I wanna make sure I have nothing selected. So I just make sure that little button here, the clear is grayed out. If it's not, I click on it. Now I can do an intersection operation and I'm gonna, I'm gonna save that in a, I'll just call that source intersect target, SIT equals intersect. And then in here, in I have to make a list and that'll be source target. And then the name of the output layer, I'll also call it SIT, S-I-T. And finally, um, all attributes. So I wanna join all the attributes during this. So I do my intersection. Oh. 
and we got an error for that one. So it can't create the output. So the environment's here. Where is that current workspace? So right now I'm in a temporary place. It doesn't like the saving there. So I'm going to make this permanent. I'm going to save this map. And I'll give it a um, let's call it BIA for basic base B B AI basic area interpolation. And I'll try to rerun that, see if it can make the um field computation now. Okay, so that's good. So if I look at the attribute table now for um, sit, sita instead of sit, but our variable is still called sit. We can see here a few things. So if I look at, I'm going to close the Python window temporarily there. Um, we have our source areas. And again, these are source areas and source IDs. So the source ID is the ID from the um, blocks, or I should say from the force cover. So I'm just gonna sort by that in ascending order just to see how many IDs there are of each one. So for one, two, three. So for one, two, and three, so for one, two, and three, for one, for example, one, has a has a um, source area of forty four seven hundred, and then a shape area, which is after intersection of forty four six nine nine point six, which is pretty much forty four seven hundred. So there's a little bit of that that one, and if we just zoom to wherever that is, zoom to. So there was a little bit of that one that was um, outside of the actual, maybe we can't even see that difference here. If we look at blocks. So someplace here, there was a little bit of it outside, so a little bit of it got cut off. And it did not fall into another polygon. And then we see two, three, same thing. You can see that for, for that one, it's almost, it's 59706, 59706.77, and this is 0.85. So a little bit of that one was also cut off. That means that when they intersected, um, one was left somewhere else, um, non existing. But then we see like this for four, right? Four has two. So let's zoom to those ones, just to have a look at what's going on. A little bit smaller. So here we go. So four is the idea of is the ID of these two blue polygons together. So originally they were one polygon in the forest cover, and that line wasn't there. The one where my mouse is going up and down right now. Once they were intersected, that line was put there, and a polygon was created here, and a polygon was created right there. So it cut that particular forest cover polygon into two parts. The first part is right there. And we can see that it has a shape area of 441 square meters. And it originally the whole area that plus this one was 15, five, eight, seven. So only a little bit of it uh, was cut and remain in once it was cut it goes into block one that's what the FID block here means block one so block one will receive a small portion of it 441 square meters and block four receives the remainder of 15,146 out of the 15,587 you can see it right there so the little one that I have selected is in block one, forest block one, and there's that much of it. And then the rest is this one over here, and that's all in block four. 
That's the majority of that original polygon. But that means that some of the, well, there's zero balsam fir in this one, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so nothing, it's gonna get, it's gonna remain zero, but let's say it did have uh, the balsam fir in this one was, you know, let's say it was a hundred. Well, maybe, maybe less than, less than 1% of that or a little more than one or 2% would go into forest block one and the rest of that 100 count of trees, if there was hundreds in there, would go into four, polygon four or block four. Um, there's some, here's one as a, another example there. I'll just zoom to that, that one. Same type of issue, right? So we have polygon one or, or block one will receive that portion of 1400 trees and block three, which is where that part is in now, will receive the remainder. And we can see here that the original area of that forest plot was 169,000 and a bit square meters and only 991 so less than 0.5% is in block one and the remainder is in block three over here. So that is that whole region over here is block three and then over here is block one. And so block three is gonna get the majority of those 1400 balsam firs. So the question is then how much should it get of the 1400? Well. If we were to take the, oh, there's the shape area there. So I was looking at the wrong thing for the shape area. I was looking at shape length. So shape area is what we're considering here, obviously, but it's the same thing, everything that I just said. So we'd say 5937 divided by the source area of 169,000 gives us a proportion. And we multiply that proportion by 1400 and then whatever that number is goes to block one. And then we say 163,161 divided by 169,000 and a bit. And that proportion will be around 0 0.9, you know, 0.99. And so about, you know, over 1300 trees will be going and assigned to block three because of that. So that's how what we're going to be doing and why we needed that original source area and we need to know the shape area these the area of the intersected polygons to do that so now what we need to do then is add a new um, field to this table the CITA table, the, again, that's a source intersect target. We need a new field here. We'll just call it AT because that's what the equation is, AT. And it's just the term for, for the reallocation as you saw in the slides uh, in the video. So we'll say, okay, AT equals shape area divided by source area times balsam fir. And that will then do the allocation for every polygon. Otherwise it would take a long time, right? Because we'd have to be manually doing all that. That's, that'd be not so much fun to do. So to do that here in the map, I'll just make sure I clear all my features because I was playing around selecting them. I'll go back to my analysis tab, Python. And I'm gonna add a field again to this CITA now. So CITA, uh, but it's called SIT here, S-I-T. So SIT is the variable. Sita is the layer name. So I'll say add field, add field. And in here, SIT, field name will be AT and the type will be double. Double precision, yeah, double.
So now we can see if I just move my Python window, there's the AT field. So now I'm going to calculate field in there. And I'm going to be using a calculated uh, an expression. So I'm going to, um, I'm just going to make it here exp, ex, or let's call it eqn for equation. And that's going to be equal to, in single quotes, whatever I would put into the field calculator for this. So I want to be able to see the field names since that's, all, that's what I'm working with. Ooh, and I made that a bit too big, so I'm gonna make it smaller. There we go. So I'll just move that up here so I can see the field names. So EQN will be again um, here. I'm gonna have balsam fur. So that's gonna be in these, uh, beginning and ending start there and then balsam fur. So that's good. Multiplied by a quotient. The quotient will be shape area. Divided by, divided by symbol, source area. So I'll just hit enter. So that just saves that this in a, in a string that I can use in my calculate field. So now I'll do a calculate field. I'll say calculate field. Here will be my sit, the field, AT. The expression will be E Q N like so. So now if I look over my AT over here, some of them are zeros. Whenever balsam fur is zero, right? If there's no balsam fur, then there's no balsam fur in AT because zero times something is just zero. If I go back and look at some of those other ones that we were looking at earlier, like the one that had 1600 or something or 1400 right there. I just have to make that field a bit bigger. It's got decimals in it. So there was that, that was the one with um, 1400 and 49 of them of those balsam first, we'll go to block one and 1350 of them, we'll go to block three. And likewise, every one um, has now been reassigned a proportional amount of the original count back to the original block. So you can see that here. Now, the final thing we need to do is we want to then dissolve and sum by either the, by the DBUID, for example, or it could be the FID blocks, either one. Because remember, each of these, if I was to just um, put that into, sort that ascendingly, for example, the DBUID, you can see there's a bunch of them and they're all the same value because these were all parts of that particular DBU ID or block polygon that intersected part forest. So basically here, for example, if I was to select all of the DBU IDs that were equal to 355 806 or FID3, um, and I'll just show you that selection up here. I'll go to map and I'll go to select by attributes. And this is just an ad hoc one, so I'm not doing it in Python. I want the CIDA and I want new selection, new expression. So just click on that where, um, where is it? FID blocks is equal to three. 
I'll run that. Then look back over here. And there we go. So it selected 75 of 363 intersected polygons belong to block three. Now, if I was to right click on AT right here and say statistics, the sum of those then is the total number of balsam fir within that block. So in this case, the sum is of the selection is 13,900. So 13,900 of the total 52,790 are in block FID3. And I could of course repeat that and write that down on a piece of paper, right? For each of the blocks, I could go back and again, do another selection, select all the blocks, look at the statistics and record the sum. But there's an easier way to do that type of stuff. And it's called a dissolve function. So first I go to map, make sure nothing's selected because I just selected things. And I'm gonna use dissolve. And I'll call this output AT, just so I have a, a variable if I wanna use it again in another process, referring to this final layer. So I'll say dissolve. Um, sit, and then the, the, the in features, the out features, um, what we call it, what we want to call the out features. I think we'll call it just AT, same as the inputs. I don't want those weird, that's weird. How, how am I get? how did I get italics in here? Okay. So, um, AT, everything's fine now. And then what do I want to sum by? Um, I want to sum by the field called, uh, what was it, DB UID? That was a longer identifier. Can't remember the name of the shorter one offhand that we were just looking at that had one, two, three, four, five in it. So I'll just use DB UID. And then what do I want to have? How do I want the summations to happen? Well, I need to have, again, a double thing because I could do for multiple different ones. And I want to sum the AT field that I created, right? Calculated up here, the AT field. It's a sum of that that I want. So I'll just put AT. And I want to sum like so. And then I'll hit Enter. Uh, what's the problem? Invalid syntax, where? Uh, I forgot a one of those, there we go. So syntax means you, you forgot something in your expression, obviously. And I just missed that closing brace there. So now I have AT and I'll just move this over. Close that and I'll close this stuff down here too. So I can actually see everything. And I'll zoom out to AT. Zoom to layer. And you can see that AT is now the same geography as blocks were, which is what we expected because we dissolved by block. The only difference now is that AT, if I open the attribute table, will have a sum AT field in it that we just created, that sum AT field. So I can now map, um, if I go to appearance, symbology, graduated colors, I can map the AT by the sum AT field right here. So the sum AT field represents the number of balsam firs in each of the individual blocks. The most are down here, second most, you know, and you can see where the, you have more or less. And the original balsam fir is here, and you can see the scales are now different, right? And what we see sort of makes sense. The darkest ones, there's a lot of dark ones in that bottom block, a few in here in that block, then that one, very few up here. 
And so we're just looking at it to see if it makes sense visually, right? Based on what we know about the distribution of balsam fir. So that's one way, that's one, the first step in any type of ad hoc validation is to compare it to the original. And does it make sense that this one would be darkest down here? In other words, have the most balsam fir. And looking at forest cover, like so, we can see that in that region, we do have some very dark ones. The darkest ones are in that region. And there's even medium dark ones in there. So certainly has the most dark. So that makes sense. Now, what about the lightest one up here? Well, it doesn't have any really dark ones, just light colors, so zeros, and then less than 600s. And that one's a little bit very similar, but it has a couple dark places in it, so it should be higher in final count. And it is, you see, you got that very light color and then slightly darker there. So we check it visually to make sense, right? Does it make sense? Then the final thing we do is that because this is basic area interpolation, it's volume preserving or pycnophylactic. So that's a property of preserving the volume across the process of disaggregating and reaggregating data. The volume here means the total count. So the total sum of the AT column, if I go to statistics here, I'm interested in the total sum, 52,790. That should be the exact same as the original forest cover balsam fir column. So I open up forest cover. And again, remember 52,790. And then I look here and I do a statistics and I'm looking for 52,790. And I get 52,800. So 890, so 790, I think 52, 790 I had. Let's go back to that just sum here. 52, 790, and then the forest cover, 52, 800. So there's a difference of 10 trees. And we saw that in some, in some areas or in some places, the, there was some mismatch in along the boundaries or something in the areas. And that, that would account for that 10 difference, for example. So there, there could be rounding and stuff like that, but there's only 10, a difference of 10, that is most likely because of that, those boundary issues. So if we go back and we look at the, the original um, CITA, one here cancel, I wanna look at the attribute table. And if we look at source area and then shape area, for most of them, they're, they're pretty, if there's just one, so if I, again, block, that means that this source area is 15, 5, 6, 1, and so is the shape area after intersection. And that just means that the entire area was in there. And so they should have the same number, which they do. But there were some, if I just intersect there, sort that ascending. This one here, for example. So for this particular um, source area, so that that's the that's an original um, polygon just up here in the within the um, the forest uh, cover layer. So we, we see here that it has a source area of 44,700 and it's, its source ID is one. And if I was to sort ascending by source ID, I see that there is no other one. So it's one single um, region that was completely within that block. And so its source area and shape area should be the same. And they're slightly different. So it's 44,700 here and 44,699 here after intersection. Remember, 
So that's after intersection. So that means that there was a part of it along the boundary here, a very small part that was outside of the region. So it just is gone in the intersection. And that means that some trees will be gone from allocation into the blocks, a little bit of them. And this type of stuff explains the difference of 10 trees overall without a problem when you see that. Because you see AT here is 199.99, whereas it really should be 200 if it's completely within um, that block. But it wasn't completely within the block. It was almost completely within. And that's basic area interpolation. So now we have a new geographic level at which we can analyze with our other data the um, number of uh, balsam fir trees. We went from forest cover to that and reallocated the counts.